Thank you very much. So before you, uh, you were a state delegate, you worked as a civil engineer for the Department of Transportation. What made you decide to go into politics? Well, there's a, a lot of reasons why I want to get back to my country, and that's the reason why I decided to get into politics, because policy making has an impact on our life from the moment we wake up till the moment we close our eyes. Hmm. I also want to bring on Jess Phoenix, who is a volcanologist, and she's currently a congressional candidate for California's District 25. She's based out of Acton, California. Welcome to Science Friday. Thanks for having me, Ira. It's great to be here. So when it comes to science, is it, uh, are any issues really not all politicians will share your point of view? How would you communicate with a colleague who doesn't share your view, view Jess? Well, what do you hope to bring to the table? Well, one strategy I've noticed that works really well, and I think I picked this up when I used to teach college at Cal State LA, uh, is to ask questions. If somebody says they don't believe something that you know to be, um, you know, scientifically uh, an, uh, a good, solid thing, you can say, well, why do you believe that? And then you wait, and then you listen. Because you can't enter a dialogue with someone unless you have an actual conversation, you have that opening. And if you come at something from a perspective of, oh, you're wrong, you're wrong, then you're setting yourself up for failure because you're already putting the other person into a hostile position. So I, I like to just ask questions. And uh, I think that usually is a really good way to understand where somebody may be getting information that just isn't uh, up to the standard that you'd like it to be as a scientist. Now, Aruna, you have some experience in politics being Maryland State Delegate. Um, can you be successful, as Jess is saying, in, in, in talking to your colleagues? Absolutely. You know, policy making has a lot to do with coalition building and reaching a consensus, much like what Jess is saying. And it starts with being a good listener. Um, you know, you're going to have differences of opinion, no doubt about that. But at the end of the day, it's about everybody working towards a common goal, which is to create policy that's going to impact the greater good of our community. My number eight four four seven two four eight two five five. You can also tweet us at side pride. I want to ask you the question I, uh, uh, I asked Ar Aruna, uh, uh, Jess, why, why do you, you study volcanoes, I'm sure you must be out in Hawaii doing some work, right? I... No, I, I've missed out. <laughs> I've been running for Congress for the last uh, 13 months, but uh, I have before. <laughs> well, so, so what, okay, what made you leave volcanoes, so to speak, and, and, and run for Congress? Well, the last five years, actually, I've been uh, running a nonprofit called Blueprint Earth. It's an interdisciplinary environmental science research and education organization. And so I deal a lot with students, uh, college and university students and elementary students. And a lot of our students come from uh, non-traditional backgrounds for the sciences. So we have 76% uh, women participate, 54% uh, people of color, and 60% of our students come from low-income backgrounds. So when I saw, uh, just from observing how they would interact with each other and the what I would hear them say about difficulties their families were facing um, or things that they were concerned about for their futures, say student loan debt or trying to find a job in the place where they, they grew up, uh, being able to go to a four year public university near their house wasn't an option for a lot of them. So I thought, well, you know, um, a lot of people are being impacted by policies and uh, by the state of the world, and there, there are things in there that are not based in evidence. They're based on opinion or based on what lobbyists or pollsters told people to do. So I think that, um, you know, it was really just the, it was the, the urgency of seeing Scott Pruitt and Ryan Zinke, uh, et cetera, running things uh, into the ground in some cases, and uh, kind of this this rule by opinion and by money. And I thought we could do a lot better than that. And bringing evidence and policy making is something that we need more of, and not just from scientists. But scientists typically shy away from being politically active. Don't they? Yeah. Well, well, that's um, I I think that's been the case for the last 64 years uh, since Robert Oppenheimer was persecuted um, for speaking out against uh, well about the dangers of nuclear technology. Uh, then he was stripped of his security clearance, and I think that's when scientists sort of said, "Oh, well, we better shut up and do our work." And uh, and unfortunately, that's not the case because mm -hmm. science is inherently political. When a government makes its funding decisions, it is telling you what its pol political priorities are. Mm -hmm. So we really, really need to have a voice as a scientific community because no one is going to speak up for us and we have to get better about communicating the value of our research and what we do to the public. Aruna, would you agree? 
Absolutely, uh, Ira. In fact, you know, I should point out that three of our presidents have been engineers. We had George Washington, uh, Herbert Hoover, as well as Jimmy Carter. So the very first president of our nation was really with a science background, engineering background. So. Uh, we're here. It's just taken us a little bit longer to really dive into these fields um, at the federal level especially. But if you take a look at local politics, state delegates, councilmen, you do see a lot of people with science and engineering background running for public office now, which is very encouraging. But with so many people skeptical of, of politics and politicians, not trusting politicians, does being a scientist help with your public perception? Or, Absolutely, because again, um, we come with evidence-based, uh, you know, uh, data that we, you know, that's how we make our decisions: logical, predictable. We work within certain confines of laws, and right, you know, right there alone, I think the public has a certain element of trust with you. Now, policy making uh, it gets um, a bad reputation, the politics of it, but once you remove that aside. Policy making has a significant impact on our lives. And again, much like engineering and science, we're both working towards making lives better for the people that we uh, either work with or we represent. Let's go to the phones on number 844-724-8255. Kara in Northampton, Pennsylvania, welcome to Science Friday. Hi, thank you for taking my question. I was just wondering, what makes you more qualified than our current politicians that run? But Jess, well, you want to take that first? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so I don't know if it's a question of being more qualified. I think it's being differently qualified, and in some cases better qualified to address particular issues. But the way I see it is we have 80% of our current representatives um, in Congress are lawyers or business people. And lawyers in particular are trained to argue for whoever is paying them. Uh, they can play devil's advocate on a number of issues. Uh, that's helpful in a court of law. But in political decision making, it doesn't necessarily end up with people who are working for the best interest of their constituents, um, you know, fact-based uh, plans that are going to produce the best outcome for the community. And so I think that as scientists, we have the ability to not only weigh things in a more impartial manner than a lot of other fields, because that's part of our training, but we're very methodical about it. And uh, we also are really good at creative problem solving. Um, and, you know, engineers are the same way as scientists. Uh, we take situations that arise in the real world that are often unexpected and we figure out how to deal with them because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do our jobs mm -hmm. All right. and I would add to, I would add to that also that I think our elected representatives should be reflective of their communities so as just said when you have a majority of our elected officials that are of a certain professional background I think we need to bring greater diversity to the policy table and it's just not just scientists and engineers it could be educators, it could be firemen, it could be people of a whole host of different backgrounds. I think we need to have that because that's the best way in which we're going to come up with the solutions to the problems that a nation of 320 million you know, people uh, are going to face as we move forward. Well, let's talk about some of those problems. Let's talk about some of the issues. What are the, what are the top one or two issues that are not being addressed or that you think scientists can better address if you get elected? Uh, Jess, yeah. okay. <laughs> go to your first letter, Rudy. Yeah, Rudy, go ahead and take it. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I'm sure Jess would agree with this, with climate change, right? This is something that's mm -hmm. facing us uh, globally, and this is happening right now, and our entire civilization exists on how we're going to address this urgent issue. And I think that is one of the top things that uh, we're seeing absent in the Trump administration, that it is not being handled in the way that we would like to see it handled. That, you know, science is being attacked somewhat here. I've never seen this before, at least in my lifetime. Yeah. And I would add to what Aruna just said too, because it's a it's a great um, it's basically what I say to people. But then um, you know we actually we have an example for this in our past. Um, we have a big picture problem, 
that is partially man-made and partially natural, so that's with climate change, and then we had the same issue when, we, when the Dust Bowl happened uh, back in the 30s. And the government actually worked closely with scientists and local communities to create strategies to solve the problem. And that's where we are. We need to have kind of a hand-in-hand approach with government, scientists, and the public to solve this problem because climate change is the greatest national security threat that our country is going to face over the next 50 years because it's a threat multiplier. So it's something that we need to deal with because you may not think it affects you on a day-to-day basis as you go about your life, but it does actually um, amplify the effects of of terrorism and terror groups, of food insecurity, and of uh, migration issues.